guys, welcome back to Caligula's Classroom. Today we're going to be doing some Google Slides, which is Google's version of Microsoft PowerPoint. So to start a new document, we're going to go press that blue button in the top left corner, and we're going to go into the drop-down menu to where we see Google Slides. Now, just like Google Docs, we have a chance to either do a blank presentation or we can go from a template. Um, just to show you what a, some of the templates look like, we're going to click on that, and once this menu loads up, we can go ahead and take a look at it. Now, obviously, the Expedition School doesn't have any, but just in general, Google has a bunch of different templates, so it might be in your best interest to look through some of those and see if any of them pique your interest. So now we're going to go back and open a new, simple, blank presentation. So when we click on the blank presentation, it, um, we have a title slide that is available to us. Over on the right side, you'll see themes that are available for you, and you can go ahead and scroll through all of those different themes. Um, there's simple light, which is the default, and then you have dark, material, and all these other ones. You can also change those themes to something a little more funky, but we'll show you how to do that later. So the first thing that we're gonna see um, that on Google Slides is that it has a top bar that is similar to Google Docs, but a little bit different, and we're gonna go through all these functions in a little bit just to show you what they all do. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is, of course, title our presentation. And just like Google Docs, the first things that you write on the slide will automatically become the saved uh, document's name. I'm going to call mine Sample Slide Template. And as I click on the Untitled Presentation area in the top left corner, it automatically becomes that, and that's how it will save. And it will automatically save no matter. All right, so I'm going to put my name on there. So no matter what, um, my name is on the title so that people know whose presentation it is. OK, so up in the top left corner, you'll see a plus symbol, and that will actually give you a new slide. Google Slides automatically gives you a default slide that it will present as the next slide. But you can go ahead and change that by that drop down menu, which is right there next to the plus symbol. And you can choose whatever one you want. Maybe you want two columns. Maybe you just want a title only. Maybe one column. Maybe you just want one for a picture and a caption. It's all really all up to you. So we're going to go ahead and choose the one with two columns and just put that there as an example. So now my presentation is three slides. We have just a regular title, one with description, and then one with two columns. Next thing is that if you press the arrow to the left, it will undo something. If you press it to the right, it will fix it and redo it. The next is a zoom button. Say you wanted to zoom in on something, all you'd have to do is click the, the magnifying glass with a plus in it that says zoom. And if you wanted to unzoom something, you would just click the button right next to it with the square with the three objects in there. If you just want a regular cursor, you can go ahead and click the cursor, which is right next to the box with the T. And the T box is actually a text box, so if we click that and we can drag and drop a box and create one or two, we can actually write in those text boxes, and we can also move them if we don't like them where they are. Multiple text boxes allow us to write different messages inside of different boxes. So here I'm writing hi, also hi, and also, also hi, so that I now have the ability to write in different areas of the screen. It doesn't just make me write somewhere uh, fixed, so I can have more leeway onto where I want to type. If I want to delete a text box, all I have to do is click on the box itself and then press the delete button, and there it goes. It's gone. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add pictures, and the box next to the text box uh, icon is an insert image. Now, inserting an image is quite simple. You can either upload one from your computer or you can search on the internet. Another way you can add a picture is by going to the insert tab and pressing on the image button, which is right there. So you can click on that, and now if you wanted to go onto the search menu, you could click on the search button, which is the farthest uh, icon to the right, or you could simply just drag an image into the area that says drag an image here. But we're going to go ahead and search, so we're just going to type in something uh, that we want to search for. And so we have McDonald's because I'm hungry, and I'm gonna just going to choose the first one just to make it simple, and there it is. We double click it and it instantly gets loaded onto our screen. If we want to make it smaller, we can grab the edges and drag and pull it down and make it smaller. We can make it wider. We can make it taller. But what we're going to do next is actually going to crop the image. And you can crop the image by putting your cursor on the weird little fence symbol up there and you can click it and then it'll 
cover your image and what you can do is you can make your image sleeker. You can take away all that extra space and just have the logo itself. Um, and once again, if you press the crop image after you've cropped it, it will take away that spot. So I'm just going to try to crop out everything but the M. So as you can see, I'm going to each corner and there it is. Now I just have a cropped M. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to do image options. And image options is the button uh, next to the crop button. And what image options allows us to do is change the color of our image. So if I go ahead and click on that image options button, I can recolor the red and yellow McDonald's to give it a little more pizzazz. Maybe I want to make it blue, right? So there it is. Now McDonald's now is blue. It's going through its Picasso period. Okay, if you want to go back to red and yellow, you just hit recolor. And now we can play with the image again. We can make it transparent, making it completely see-through. Or we can go back a little bit, maybe 75% or 50%, and there it is. It's now um, completely see-through as 100, but as 50, it was just sort of see-through. Okay, so now we've made it 80%. Now you can barely see the image. That is, if you wanted to put something on there and you didn't want it to detract away from the actual words on the slide. But if we want to reset the adjustments, all we have to do is just press the button. We can make it brighter. And if we want to play around with the contrast, we can go ahead and make the red redder and the yellow redder if we were to make it larger like that. And now it's really bright. And you can do that for any image if you're really looking to bring out the colors of any picture or maybe art that you have. Honestly, it's just something that you'd want to play around with and see what work look, uh, excuse me, what looks best for your presentation. So I've gone ahead and changed my symbol to a Bojangles sign. And what I'm going to show you guys how to do now is to actually hyperlink a picture. To do that, you click on the image, and then you press the chain link that's up there where my mouse is. And that allows you to, you know, hyperlink, meaning that if you were to click on the image during your presentation, it would bring up a, a website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go search on Google for Bojangles. And while this loads up, I'm going to click on there first thing and grab the hyper or the URL. I'm going to cut it and I'm going to paste it into this and hit apply. Now, theoretically, all I have to do is when I'm presenting the image, I just have to click on the image and it should bring me to the website, which it's doing right there. Another useful thing about um, hyperlinks is that if you were creating like a Jeopardy board and you wanted to go back to the main slide, you could actually link it to the main slide itself so that when they click on it, it would just go back to the slide it was supposed to. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to this paint carton, and if we touch the paint carton, click the paint carton button, we can change the area that we write in uh, the color, so I'm making it darker here. You can make it any color that you would like it. The outsides would still remain uh, white, but let's say you wanted to make it, you know, a theme color, so we can make it kind of mustardy, orange or yellow, perhaps green, we can make it blue, we can make it purple, all different colors, but we can also go back and hit that transparent button, and we can also make it white. So the next thing we're going to do is look at font, and your fonts should have saved from the last lesson, and so you can go through and maybe type in any of the Cooler fonts, remember that if you're doing a professional presentation, it might be good to stick to that Arial or Times New Roman. Um, but sometimes title slides and titles of documents of presentations allow you the chance to have a little more pizzazz when it comes to writing in different fonts. It's also good to remember that your title font should be larger than your text font. And that's just going to speak. I mean, it's automatic. But see, mine is at 28. And when I was to click on the text itself, it would be 18. It's also good to middle your title um, in certain cases if it looks good. You want to balance out uh, your PowerPoint slides and make sure that they have some sort of balance and not everything's on the left or the right side. You want to kind of keep it balanced. And you can do that by pressing uh, the middle button like I did there or the Command Shift or Control Shift E like we learned about in our Docs lesson. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is something new. It's going to be clicking at the bottom right yellow button that says Explore. Now this allows our little image to become bigger and our text box to become smaller and sometimes even see-through. This is a new feature to Google Slides and it allows you to be a little bit more creative with your PowerPoint making. Um, I can think of a bunch of teachers who could have really used this when I was in school. Um, because they'd always have images that detract from the learning. And you can see that at some part of this, 
Um, the Bojangles message is transparent over, or excuse me, the message is solid over a transparent uh, sign. You can also do things like this where all the writing is on one side or at the bottom, and it doesn't actually detract away from the slide itself. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a table, and there's an insert table button, or there's a table button itself on the tab, and we can make a table as big or as, as little as we want to. We can mess around with the columns. We can also distribute rows and columns to make sure that they are even, just like we did in docs. So in case you wanted to add a table, and you can put text in each side of those boxes, or you can add a text box inside to make it a little bit easier to move. You can also change the theme. Uh, like we talked about, so in case we wanted to change the theme a little bit, we could make it a little bit different. It would change the fonts. Pretty cool. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is animations, and you can click Transition for that, and it will begin. And the first thing you need to do is to click a text box or an image that you want to animate. So for this, I'm going to click my title. And I have a lot of options that I want to do. So the first and default is fade in, but I could choose fade in or fly in or zoom in, something that would appear. Okay, you always want to appear before you disappear. You can also make your image or text box appear faster or slower, depending on, you know, if you're really trying to kill time during your presentation. I always recommend it being kind of faster if you're flying in or appearing. Um, you obviously want to make it look good. So I've gone ahead and faded in both my title and now my text. I can also go and do another paragraph and I can actually transition by paragraph. I'll show you how to do that. So I'll write another sentence here about Bojangles, delicious chicken and biscuits. So once that comes up, I mean, the, their Cajun flavor is really to die for. Okay, and so I can click by paragraph now and now I'll be able to transition line by line. And you might see teachers do this when they're giving you informational facts and they don't want to give you all at once, so they'll just do sentence by sentence. So, of course, every time I click, I'll be able to see my title, then my text paragraph one, and then my text paragraph two. I can also click on an image and animate that as well. So by clicking the image, I can also fade that in. So now I can preview what my slide's going to look like. And there are all of my fading in images. Pretty neat, right? Now, I'm not going to go ahead and do the fade outs because you can get the hang of that. So if you want to put stuff to fade out, you can also do that by selecting the image and fading it out. Okay, similar to docs, we can share our presentation with others. Maybe we have um, other people working on the document with us. And you would just do that by typing in their email address and selecting either the arrow for edit, uh, the pencil for edit, the eye for view, or the uh, comment uh, for can comment. Another cool thing is if you go into your Tools tab and you go to Preferences, you will see a lot of shortcuts for um, some interesting stuff. Maybe you wanted to put a trademark symbol or a copyright or an arrow or mathematical fractions and not have them look a little more professional. You can learn your shortcuts through that. So by clicking on Tools here, going down to Preferences, you will see there is a bunch of different shortcuts that you can learn for when you're making presentations. Another thing you can insert into Google Slides, which I think is cool, is a video from YouTube. And so I wanted to maybe add a video from Bojangles. I could type in the word Bojangles, and oh, there's a lot of songs about Mr. Bojangles. Um, but hey, I want to look at this, the full menu Bojangles challenge. I would click on the video, now I could either double click it and it would add, or I can just click it once and hit select. Now just like a picture, I can make it smaller, I can make it bigger. But the one thing I can't do is hyperlink it like a uh, picture. I can't make it magically appear. I can only have it appear on my slide. So just a word of warning, if you're going to add a video, you know, make sure it's in a place where it's not going to detract from the person's eye. Okay, another thing you can add to these slides are lines and arrows in case you need to point to something directly onto your uh, presentation. You can also transition those just like a picture. So if you just want to make a line and you want to point to something like Bojangles has delicious chicken and biscuits, I can drag an arrow down and point to the video that I'll be showing. I can also add shapes like squares, circles, triangles, diamonds, giant arrows, uh, multiplication signs, addition signs, and then I can also add thought bubbles and speak, uh, speech bubbles, I guess that's what they're called. Um, you can write inside of these images, which I think is cool, and so in case you needed to put some sort of personification onto a picture, like I'm doing here, I can actually add that just like that. 
Okay, and the last thing I'm going to look at today is the help menu. Now, if, say you forgot how to do something, all you have to do is really just search for it. So maybe I forgot how to animate something. All I would actually have to do is type in the word animate, and it would bring me to the section that I need to get to animate my stuff. So that's it, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this week's lesson on Google Drive uh, Slides Edition.